This episode of the podcast is supported by Bentley Lewis, an award-winning executive search firm. Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. We are proud to be official media partners of Dive In Festival this year, which is really cool. And we're doing a series of podcasts for the festival. And if you don't know, Dive In Festival is a global movement in the insurance sector, which is supporting the development of inclusive work place cultures so really really cool work they're in about 33 countries now so they do these really cool events panel discussions uh, all over the world really helping to promote diversity and inclusion which is very cool i hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy awesome and we're live folks thank you very much for joining me on the video cast and today it's great to be joined by Sandra Wallace, who is the Joint Managing Director for Europe at uh, Dear Piper. Sandra, thank you very Hello. much for joining me. Good to see you. Hello. <laughs> and you. How, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Nice sunny day. Always helps. <laughs> it's beautiful. This weekend, yeah, this weekend was awesome. I know this will be shown a little bit later, but um, yeah, this weekend has been, been great. And it was it was good to talk to you last week as well. We had a good yeah. uh, a good chat. So how yeah. we were talking about the other day, but how, how have you found your the lockdown experience the last kind of four months or so? At the beginning, it felt sort of quite nice to be at home with the kids, to just be chilling, doing the work, um, getting used to a new norm. And then it starts to get sort of, right, how long is this actually going to go on for? <laughs> and how long can I sit in these four walls in this same room, you know, do the same thing? So you do have to find things to break up the day. Otherwise, you do start to go a bit stir crazy. But um, yes. it's been good. It's been good. Uh, reflections and and things like that a bit more time to ponder than normal yeah. have you always have you always so have you done do you usually do five days in the office or have you yeah have but you, uh, well I'm normally traveling quite a lot because I run in DLA about 15 or so jurisdictions I'm traveling I'm on the road a lot I spend a lot of time I'm out my home's in Birmingham but I live uh, I've got a flat in London as well so I'm in London a lot and then I'm on, I'm in the air a lot so it's really been I felt like I've been grounded for for uh, how many months <laughs> yeah wow. I wonder if you're ever going to get back to you do you know, think just... it, do you think it'll ever go back to how it was I'm not sure it will I'm I don't not think sure so. people will travel as much as they did um, I don't think so I think people are quite enjoying it's nice to have a mix you know because it takes time to hop on a plane go to yes. Germany have your one meeting and fly back and it can get mm. quite tiring and quite grinding I think as well um, yeah I think you can't be being together so you yeah. so it's never going to be the case that home working or whatever is the, the only thing people do but I don't think they'll go back to man, the manic lifestyles for the time you know for the time being which might not be yeah. great for some of the the industries that rely on us to be moving around all the time but I think yeah. they'll, they'll be a new normal won't they yeah they will but I still think face to face though I mean you just can't you make can't friends with someone good. unless you spend time with them totally agree you know, it's so good. So, and also, I did. I did a poll actually on. I did a poll on LinkedIn a few weeks ago, just on. Just do, do you want to work from home five days a week, um, come into the office five days a week, or a combination? And you know, eighty percent of people were like, "I want a combination or office five days a week." So, like, yeah. I think the office is still going to be like core to to life. It's still very sociable, and if you think about it, it you know people's living environments might not be the case that they can be at home comfortably if they share a house or childcare commitments or just the environment is quite is quite contained and it's you know it's nice to get out and meet and see other people during the day and that's how you bounce ideas off people and you network and you come up with new uh, you know new ways of working at work you know so uh, i do think you need both definitely yeah yeah we'll get there mm. there's definitely going to be less less need for so much office space yeah you know? that's something as a firm we'll be thinking about yeah oh, you know every venture we're going to now we'll have that thought yeah definitely yeah that'd be interesting yeah how did you how did you become the european managing director what, what's the what was the story uh so my story uh how long have you got now uh <laughs> i, I <laughs> so my background is quite is not legal at all so i um came from a family of six um uh, my, my parents did my mom was a cleaner my dad was a painter and decorator so no sort of 
idea of going into law, but really wanting to do to to progress in a way that meant we had more money because essentially we didn't have any. Um, yeah. You know, we we lived in a rented accommodation. It was very um, you know small, and so you just think, right, I want a better life. And so for me, I started um, out thinking I would do something like I was big into cooking and I like cooking even now uh, and I thought I'd go and get some A-levels to go to the College of Food and Domestic Arts which sounds very grand doesn't it um, but it turns out that I needed uh, two A-levels for that so I went to my FE college and got um, three A-levels and when I was there I was thinking well actually if I tried tried for a career that was going to be you know, something more long term or something that might give me the means, you know, to earn more or whatever it might be. And my parents were sort of, you go to work, you go to college that will allow that. But we're not really into this university thing. You know, that's right. three years when you're not working, you're not earning, you're not bringing money <laughs> into the house. Yeah. And so I was like, OK, I'm going to have to do a degree that makes them think, I can I do something and, and I will earn money eventually so yeah. I chose law for that very reason so I wasn't watching some great tv program that inspired me unfortunately I just <laughs> literally thought what can I do to convince my mom that this is an okay thing to do um and and went off and and studied law and I really found I enjoyed employment law um and started at the law firm that I'm at now long story short um, doing employment law and building my practice really and having a diversity and inclusion um, emphasis to my practice as well. Did a lot of um, discrimination type cases, um, did my own advocacy because I enjoyed that at court. And then I ended up leading the employment group across the UK. Um, and it was that that got me sort of noticed, I suppose, from a management level. And they asked me to run the UK business about two and a half years later, which is the whole of the, the seven offices across the UK. Great. And then two or two or three years after that, my the CEO asked me to join his executive to become the managing director for Europe, running Amazing. several countries and not just one. So it's a long way of saying so from my, from a girl from Brummie girl from Birmingham whose parents didn't want her to go to university is now running a um, half of an international law firm. So it's quite. It's quite. Uh, there's a lot That's of ups awesome. and downs in between, but yeah, it was. That's awesome. Where did job. your Where did your motivation come from? Because you often see, you know, it's often talked about, you know, young people in in lower socioeconomic backgrounds, you know, whether they don't have like the people to look up to who have done the thing they might want to do, or yeah. what you know, to be a lawyer, right? You have to do the right GCSEs, to do the right A levels, to go to the university. If your parents were almost, it sounds like, discouraging you from from taking that path, mm. what gave you that, like that motivation to be like, actually, no, do you know what? I want to do that. <laughs> Lewis, can I be honest and yeah. say it, it was being poor. I mean, literally, having uh, my parents didn't drive, we had no means of trans, you know, so it was buses only. So standing at cold bus stops waiting for buses that never arrive. You know, having had me down, you know, I'm one of six. I was number five. So can you imagine the clothes that had been through, how many people it had been through before they got to me? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I had three, two sisters, um, above, you know, older than me, two brothers. Um, and I had, you know, we, in fact, we were eligible for free school meals. But my, my, at that, at that, my time in life, my, the, you had to, someone came to the house to assess whether you could have free school meals and someone had come to the yeah. house to ask my mom and I think they got to question number five and she basically threw them out because she just thought it was so invasive and right. so we had so we hadn't we didn't have free school so we had to go home and have whatever was left over from the night before um and it was just literally a life of uh, I just can't this can't be my life you know I yeah. I need to we need to be to get try and improve and one and brother had left and one well, had stayed at home actually but was on a yts another was had got an engineering job which was quite low paid one of my sisters worked in a fish and chip shop and it was just like we couldn't break the cycle of just having no money and so that's why everybody stayed at home because she brought money into the house to help you know to help my parents and um yeah. so it was a big deal to leave to go to university um and and take that step and, and for three years not be contributing to the house you know yeah. so it was it, it but but I just felt that this couldn't be my life you know I just wanted to be uh, to have a better life really 
to make a change yeah yeah that's yeah. amazing did you yeah. did you stay at home while you were studying at university no so well, well I that's the other story so I didn't go very far because the idea well there was a couple of things I didn't go very far because not many black people quite frankly were at universities so I went I went to Warwick and I went to Birmingham and you go to these places to do law and you just see a sea of white faces and that was just not my world and um so I ended up going to Wolverhampton Polytechnic which again everybody told me you'll never get you'll never become a lawyer going to a polytechnic but I literally moved out. It was only 11 miles up the road, but I moved out because then I had an, my own room. Yes, you like. Because <laughs> if you think about it, I was a three bedroom house uh, we were in. Uh, and so I had to share with somebody. So to go into Wolverhampton, even though it was only down the road, literally 11 miles away or something like that, I, I moved in. I moved out. What I, did your parents yeah. say? Uh, I, you know, it's so funny. So my mother was watching, uh, I think she was watching Emmerdale or Coronation Street or something. And I actually told her that I was going to move out. And my dad was there as well. My dad was much more chilled, but he wanted me to be a nurse, which was never going to happen because I hate blood. But anyway, so my mother uh, was like watching this program and she sort of looked at me as if to say, are you for real? And then just carried on watching it. And I thought, oh my God. <laughs> so I actually, what a bit I did skip because I thought this is just not going to go down well, is I well, I took a job. I took a year out between my finishing my A-levels and going to university and worked for a, a local authority um, for a year to, yeah. to show them that I could actually get a job. It wasn't that I couldn't get a job. I just thought that I could get a better job if I had a degree and so on. So I worked for a year um, at Solihull Council, which was great, actually, because that ended up being quite a lifeline to getting my training contract because I had referees from the council yeah. saying she's great etc etc so so actually my mother's reaction to me saying I wanted to go and me thinking I can't go I'm gonna have to work for a bit uh, actually worked in the long run but yeah she didn't actually say anything which with my mother said a lot <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah it's interesting because you know you you kind of you, you know people around you influence you so much don't they and they say mm -hmm you end up earning the average of your social circle and, and stuff yeah. like that. And I guess you're, you're growing up in an environment and you're looking at what people are doing and, and what they've done before. It's super hard to, to take a different path, you know? It, and, it, and yeah, it is. It, it, you're limited. It's completely right. What you're saying. It, it's, there are so many times when I could have given up because it just wasn't what people expected. I got a lot of, um, people saying I thought I was white because I was because I was trying to go on and go to university and there was a lot of people saying you know what what you're doing you know who do you think you are sort of thing and then there was people that were in, there were people that were encouraging but then you almost don't believe them so you end up in this state where you you're sort of listening to the negative more than you're listening to the positive and thinking well if I can just get through this maybe I'll do this and and you're always and I've never went very far from home because whilst I talk about my mom and a reaction and everything we were a very tight family and that that was quite important to us you know we were close we looked out for each other you know it, they were fun it was fun having living with that many people and it was always yeah. entertainment and jokes and so from that perspective it was great but if you didn't have, if you don't have that and you have negativity I just don't know how people do it and, and yeah. you do need those role models to 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 try and drive to, to get to somewhere else you yeah really do. It's, in, it's interesting that early on and it'd be interesting to, to, to hear your experiences later on that the biggest challenges came from within your community you know your family yeah. and people yeah. saying no no no, no don't do that it's, it's inter interesting yeah. yeah because I think it was so different what I was trying to do was so different the school I went to wasn't a bad school in terms of bad people people were good people were um fun but there was just no expectation of going and doing anything other than pretty much what your parents were doing or everyone else was doing and I remember going to the careers and that I'm saying I wanted to go um and do these a-levels at the time to be to do something with catering and they were like you know you know just literally stay what you're talking about just stay on the station or whatever because right. a levels i i did two a lot of um i did o levels it just shows how old i am um it's pre gcc and, yeah exactly and two of them i had to uh teach myself 
because everybody else was doing the lower level, not the what C CSE was, and then so I had to teach myself too as well because there was no teachers doing any of that. And so it's just a matter of just you just got to keep. I've just got to keep going <laughs> yeah. and just uh, yeah. believe that it's this is you know my life can be different. Um, Definitely. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's amazing because you hear a lot and, and you told me this last time we spoke, you know, moving out to move up. Yes. Right. Yeah. And which which you have to, you, you had to do to, yes. to get to where you want, got where, where you've got to. But then on the other side, you know, the, the, the community loses people like you with, you know, yeah. who, can, who can show that, look, you know, these are the different paths. It's, it's yeah, it's a point that I feel quite strongly about a lot of people assume they have to go to the southeast in London typically to 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 progress or to get access to the different jobs especially if it's not the mainstream type of job if they want to do the arts or um you know fashion or things like that but if it so you can you can understand that but some of the some of the basic things you know some of the careers people feel they have to go to London for or feel that's where they 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 will they will find their place or find their fit and and the, like you say people get left behind and then that community never grows and then the investment doesn't go in um and you need that you need the investment you need the infrastructure you need businesses like mine not to just be in london to be in yeah. birmingham to be in liverpool to be in you know and all the other not the mainstream places um the bradfords and so on and and now covid what is covid has showed us is you don't have to have the office just in london you can have people working for you in i don't know wolverhampton and yeah. and and they can stay in wolverhampton and grow and invest and spend their money there um and yet working and have access to good careers and i think i hope this is something that we start to to really push on I hope so. Yeah, because I mean, it's also it's brilliant because for companies, the talent pool is so much wider. You yes, know, I've, exactly. It's, it's exactly. amazing. Like I'm already seeing uh, clients of ours who are open to hiring people from all from all locations, even even yeah. different countries. I mean, you know, if you're hiring a lawyer yeah. and they're you know they're not client facing or whatever, I mean, it doesn't matter where they're based at all. Exactly, exactly. And even if they're client base facing, the transport links are there. Just you True. know. Some of them have to improve to those more disadvantaged areas. The transport links are not always great, or in rural areas particularly, yeah. they might not be the, the same um, transport links. But I think ultimately, if we can get that right, then we can see, you know, the, sort of a more spread of wealth, more spread of, you know, sort of the north-south divide that people talk about. We could sort of try and work to eradicate that sort of thing. No, definitely. Because at the yeah. moment, it's it's like if you're in that environment given your your story and experience you almost gonna you have to you almost have to withdraw yourself and and go yeah. and you know go in and follow the degree or yeah you know, etc but uh, hopefully as companies start to hire people wherever you'll yes. it'll, it'll start to infiltrate more into into all levels of society i, I think you're right yeah i think you're right and in your world you know you'll start to see like you say people open up opening up to saying okay we do want to see that person in the office two days a week but we don't care if they're three days a week and they're from somewhere else you've got you you know it's easier for you to find talent and the talent feels actually i can go for this and i don't have to confine myself to what's in my vicinity which might be lower paid or etc yeah um, definitely i'm also yeah. hoping i'm mean, going to speak to a lot of young people and it's always you know i can't do it or I can't see yeah. people like me doing it, and you know the world's not fair. You know yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I just love to see, you know, people. You can do it, right? Yes. And it, it's it's a bit of a it's it's tough, but it's it's your mindset, you know, and you've 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 proven it, right? You you get the right have the right mindset. The what the world definitely isn't fair. It might never yes. be, but don't exactly. let that stop you. Yeah, we can only control what we can control, and I think if you if you I, I, I find my way I'd teach resilience in schools because people write themselves off very early and and people write people off very early. <laughs> yes. So if we could teach resilience in schools so you don't take the first knock or somebody telling you you're not as clever or you're not as, you know, you're not as sociable or you're too quiet or you're too loud. You know, if we if we could just be a bit more diverse in our thinking um, and people are taught resilience so you, you don't lose yourself on the way you know you do lose yourself sometimes to fit 
and yeah. and and people want to ultimately you get the best of someone and you'll know this um uh when they can bring their whole self to work and if you're hiding a bit of yourself or you don't you know I was told at six years old I shouldn't speak the way I spoke I spoke patois at home and so I spoke patois when I went to school and then I got told what you you can't talk like that what's what's that sort of <laughs> speaking so you change your voice and now I speak like this and every, when I go home my mum's like why are you speaking like that you know so, <laughs> But you do, you change, you know, as you go around, you change a bit of yourself um, yeah. to fit. And that's fine. Sometimes it, it, the circumstances demand it and it's good that we had, we were able to adapt. So I'm not saying you don't change at all, but people need to be more accepting of the diversity of characters that they will come across their desk at school and, and work. Definitely, definitely. Because there's always a thing of like you've got to um, get on before you get along. Yes. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you always think, again, if you're looking at, let's say, law is a good example. I mean, it's like the caricature lawyer is like suit, tie, you know, very yeah. like super professional and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, do you think as a young person, you have to behave in a certain way to get in? To be a lawyer. Yeah. Well, we're trying to, our lawyers are working very hard to try and stop that. I mean, I think in clients are getting there as well um yes. you know I think we are we're st I mean we're a funny breed but ultimately <laughs> we are getting better at showing our real selves and recruiting from a wider pool and when we do that then we will change the natural perception of a lawyer what they should look like what they should sound like uh, that will happen over time but we are making much more strides in that work than we've ever made yeah. Um, and a lot of law firms have schemes and mentoring very early. So if young people are going to be watching this or you're going to be talking to them, that, you know, you've got to get them to think about it early and not to write it off and try and take, you know, find out about schemes that are being run by firms to sort of introduce them to law. Because, yeah. you know, if you're not careful, you will write it off as a profession because you will assume it's not for me or I can never be. And I used to think that, you know, I thought, I wouldn't ever, I'd, maybe if I just got into a law firm and it was small and, you know, now I'm at one of the world's largest law firms, it's ridiculous. But, you know, in my head, I was just thinking if I could just qualify and I kind of just do this little bit of, you know, and just take one step at a time and you, who knows where it'll end up. Yeah, because no one, no one knows what school you've gone to. No one knows how much money your parents yeah. have. Yeah, what nobody happened. cares about that now. No one yeah. cares. No one cares. <laughs> There's so many schools in the UK. I read, uh, you know, went to... St. John's or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. Millions of John's schools in the UK. I mean, no, <laughs> no one cares, you know, no. but, but 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 people care. You know, yes. like if you're if you've I don't know if you think it's not good or uh, it was a tough environment and, and all of those things, it stops you often you as an individual mm. like going for going for your dreams as as you said actually. Yeah. And if you speak to most clients and they and you ask for them to assess, you know, why what, what do you like about Sandra or Joe Blogs or whatever? Rarely do they go, oh, God, she's so intelligent. Oh, my God, I think she's so intelligent. They go, oh, she's really, I really relate to her. She gets our firm. She gets yeah. our business. She understands. She tells things in a practical way. What makes a lawyer good is not the, the mega brain. Obviously, you have to be bright. Obviously, you have to be able to get on and understand your subject. But what makes you successful are some of the basic interpersonal skills that everybody can learn and, you know, and develop definitely i'd like to see people hire for potential versus wow. experience i mean yeah because i remember i remember a friend was mine was running uh, graduate recruitment from the large law firms and she was like yeah if they don't have four a's at a level and if they don't speak two or three languages they don't even get they're not even getting through the door right yeah. and they, they had like thousands and thousands of applications but yeah. you're not necessarily getting you know the best people no and you're getting people that have all probably been with the same mindset, been taught in the same way. And so what diversity will they bring to the client experience, to what the client needs, to the businesses, if they're all the same, went to the same schools, got the same grades, never failed at anything. You know, yeah. it's it, you're just not getting the best of, of what's out there. And no. I didn't get the best grades, you know. I Once I did my A-level maths and got that over with, I never thought about maths again, you know. And I... I and my A-levels are not the top. I didn't get all A's in my A-levels. But I'm sat there with those people that did, holding my own, 
building a practice, leading a firm in the same way as they are, you know, or they're not actually. Um, and what's the difference now? So, so really, you can miss a lot of good people by making those assumptions. And I, yeah. I think the firms start are trying to move away from that. They are. It's 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 yeah. uh, it takes some some bravery, you know. Certainly yeah. in 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 an environment like this, you know, it's always safer, perceived safer to hire people yes. with, you know, yes, praise and you know, their yes. academics are great, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. But if you go a little bit deeper, you know, hire kind people. Imagine a company full of yeah. kind people. It'd be great. Exactly. And people that and you the loyalty that comes from people that actually feel like, do you know what? They took a chance on me. The loyalty that comes from those sorts yeah. of people is immense. You know, we see it all the time. They stay longer. They'll go the extra mile. They'll always be willing to 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 drive the business on your behalf because they felt, you know, what that person took, that that firm took a chance on me, and I'm going to pay it back tenfold, uh, much more so than than people that didn't didn't have really as work as much. And I'm not saying people with four A's didn't work or whatever, but just see the potential in, in all the people that apply, I suppose. Definitely. Just what like a bit more thought about what criteria you use to hire. Yes. And assess yes. people at all levels. Yes. yes. I'm sure we'll go we'll go a long way. Yeah. And assume and don't assume, I mean, you know, that people know your world. You know, when I got to my law firm, you know, I didn't know about any skiing places or you know <laughs> golfing ranges or you know I'm a big football fan but that was the end of it you know so these conversations would go on and you'd be like mm, I've never been skiing I've never been you know traveled half of these places I mean the first time on a plane I was 24 years old for God's sake you know it's like so I you know realize and appreciate and make sure you're inclusive at work because yes. you can alienate people they can make that step they can get all that way there and they can get in there finally get into your business and then feel completely out of their depths and completely yes. so so it's really important that we create an, an inclusive environment when people get there because otherwise you can people think oh this isn't for me and and, and give up early or don't stay you know Definitely. But also that's the mm. wonderful thing of a, of a diverse company is you have people from all different backgrounds, different life stories, experiences, perspectives. Yeah. And it's, it's great. You know, if you round it around a, a dinner table and everyone's got a different life experience. Yeah. You know, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. If you keep the conversation open, what do you do as opposed to assuming everybody does things or what, what yeah. floats your boat or whatever, then you're, you're going to hear loads of stories and funny things. And uh, I think that's what Zoom has maybe done um it's really yeah. funny and and all the sort of different um face to face like this people are getting a little peek into other people's worlds and it's starting new conversations i think yeah. that's quite a good thing i think that's quite good i think thing. it's really good because everyone's yeah. a little bit like, like you kind of it's a bit disarming isn't it yeah you're in the background someone's living room yeah and yeah it's just i don't know the, the facade's gone a little bit yes. you know it's yeah. just a bit more human and a bit more natural and you're getting to know people a bit better which yeah I think I say is- long long may that continue I hope even though I don't really want the coronavirus to continue <laughs> no, <laughs> but, no. but yeah, yeah yeah I think the new hopefully the new kind of the post-pandemic era will be a, a nice mix of you know face-to-face um, this video obviously is going to continue I mean yes. I can't see that slipping away but yeah it's exciting yeah. You know, yeah, I think that's an exciting moment. Just kind of to, to, to last last point, and you touched on resilience at schools and um, and and kind of like you know schools wanting their kid the kids to fit in a little bit. And and, and mm. I completely agree. I'd love to see you know certainly as companies do open offices around the country, I'd love mm. to see them kind of uh, reach down if you like in, into like into schools and and provide people to do mentoring and advice and and things like that and. It's a super way of making people, of giving people access to different ideas and careers. It's a super way of doing it. And don't just do it at 16, do it at six. Get people thinking about it really early. Uh, uh, You know, obviously they might not understand all the careers that are out there, but just talk about some of the things people do. And yeah, I think that would be great. I think schools will really welcome and I think schools will benefit from bringing business into, into into the classroom. Definitely. And I'd like to see yeah. like stuff like resilience, mindset, communication. Yeah. I mean, okay, maybe it's taught some places, but I'm I'm it's not widespread. It's, it's not widespread. No, no way. 
No, yeah. and it might might mean that you don't get those calls as often. You don't, you know, that X isn't behaving or responding in the same way because people will appreciate the different characters that are in the classroom that they have to try and cater for. And yeah. business can help with that because they can talk about the different personalities and how people develop differently in their workplaces. And, yeah. you know, so, so that's something that we could we could teach each other. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'd love to see that happen. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. It's been <laughs> awesome to speak to you. Oh, it's and been my story. pleasure. Um, keep up, well, all the great work you're doing. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. No, my pleasure. Thanks, Louise. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.